John King here on behalf of Kingdom and me, speaking with a man that fights in May at Palmer 25, Mark DKC. Mark, how are you doing at the moment? I'm good, man. I'm good. Are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> so, in your, in your last fight at Palmer 22, you stopped Rick Salvahara in, in 24 seconds, you know, arguably the, the most impressive win of your career. How much, you know, how much going into that fight was you, were you trying to impress the fans? Because, you know, the fight prior to that against Jack McGann, you, re- you received a lot of hate and a lot of criticism because people thought you kind of played it safe. So, going into the fight at Bound 22, how much were you, were you trying to impress the fans and get an, a, a, a finish? Uh, every, every time I go and fight, I always try to impress the fans. But, like, everybody criticizes me about, about uh, Jack McGann's fight. To me, it didn't really bother me that much no more because, obviously... Jack McGann's a tough guy. He's only basically he's only ever lost like to me all for three rounds. So the rest of the stuff that people were saying didn't really bother me. So, but to go in Dublin and perform like that against the against the Dublin crowd, I was very very happy with the performance that I put in. Uh, were you were you expecting to finish the fight that quickly? Obviously, it was a, it was a huge shock. People, you know, both you guys were undefeated. People were expecting it to be a war, and you went in there and finished it with one punch. Yes, it was because sort of before I had a different mentality, like uh, just obviously winning rounds. Maybe just where where I came from from the gym before where I was. I didn't really think about finishing fights. That's why because I, I, I never did, I never did anything else before doing doing uh, MMA joining MMA. So where I started, it was just more of a uh, obviously uh, doing like rounds, like winning rounds, bit sort sort of that style. But which now where I am is different. They are finishers, so as soon as they get in there, they tell me to finish. And the train that I was doing was to finish. So yes, it was. I was prepared to finish him. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, you and Kane do not like each other, and, and there's been a lot of trash talk going on with that. You know, over Twitter, over every social media, you clearly, you know, you've got a hate for each other. Where did that stem from? Why do you guys not like each other? It's not anything like that. I don't take MMA personal. You know, this is this is my life. This is what I do. I don't hate Kane, nothing personal, but this is it's trying to take take away what I work for what I've, I've worked for the last five years, you see. So this is how I know how I will pay my bills one day full of full time. So I can't have people like that trying to like bring me down because to me personally, I think Kane, you don't know what what he wants. You know, whatever he's doing music, whatever he's doing what I don't know, but he can't come trying to think and then come and take this away from me. This is a fight game. This is different to what he does. How much do you think, you know, your trash talk and, and playing games with him, how much do you think that's going to affect him on, on fight night? I'm not playing games. That's the problem. I'm talking the truth. That's all it is. I'm not playing no games. I don't play games. How much do you think that will affect him, though? Do you think he'll be, you know, too emotionally invested in the contest? Well, to be honest, I, I hope, I hope, I hope it, it does something to him that it comes to cause all I want to do is put a good fight to the fans. I want them to see what I'm made of, and that's it, really. But yeah, so I want, I want, I want, I want to sort of get to him. I don't know what's gonna, what's gonna happen, but I wanted to get to him. I want to come at me with a, with a, with a, good, with a good fight, good scrap. Obviously, you know, Kane made this banner debut last time out, and it was, you know, it was a, a decision victory over Miles Price. You've been watching that fight. You've been posting a few clips and making fun of him. What did you think of that fight? You know, as a whole, how did you think Kane did, and how did you expect him to do? You know, what? I never, I never watched it before, but every time I watch it now, it just makes me giggle because that's the funniest fight I've ever seen. <laughs> is that his easy fights that you got given before? But that is the, easy, the funniest fight I've ever seen. Like the level I'm at fighting at now, it might not have seen it, but that was just the beginning. What I gave to Savraja, him, is 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 actually is the is the one that's gonna bring me out there to be to the people because the, that fight was terrible he ma- is making so much mistakes that it takes me a second to capitalize on it because he's making so much mistake that he won't support my style now so every time i look at that fight it just makes me laugh because i find it funny and he's terrible boxing terrible yeah. So who have you you know who have you been working working with leading up to this fight uh, and how have you been training? How was the training camp? Yeah, oh, you probably haven't started yet, but how has your training been going? You know, so far. Everything's going good. Uh, I work with one of the guys in boxing coach in Sheffield. I've been working for nearly a year now, and I've got my obviously Darren Morris in Manchester and uh, Rob Lloyd, my Thai coach. 
Yeah, you know, all these guys are bringing my game in a lot, a lot, a lot better than it was. And obviously, Mike is, spy, is Mike is Mike is fighting soon. Him and Scott, and then I'm just helping them out, inspiring. And I just feel confident because these guys are in the high level, and by helping them, is bringing my game out a lot more. So I'm just looking forward to it, putting it out there for him. Yeah, you know, obviously Kane likes to strike. He's got heavy hands, but he's also got a fair few submissions on his record. Where do you expect this fight to take place? You know, do you expect to be able to control it? And, and where would you like it to take place? <laughs> uh, can you just tell me where you've seen these he- heavy hands from? I mean, it's just it's kind of like that. That's what he begs himself to be. You know, he he says he's he's got heavy hands. He can knock people out with his left hook and this and that. So that's that's his point of view. Yeah. Kane's a big talker. He likes to talk. Well, for now, for some reason, he's going quiet. You told me you've seen the, the, the uh, big heavy hands because I haven't seen it. So, I promise I'm not Savaraja. Have you seen Kane's? Look, a guy like, a guy out like that. You haven't, have you? Uh, no. Yeah. Thank you. So, that says it all, doesn't it? I don't see no heavy hands. It's, good. it's just, it's just normal, normal guys. They try tries to swing, but which he, he's not going to connect at all with me. I'm going to play with him. Play with him like a kid. That's all. Do you- so you you said you're gonna play with him. Do you, do you expect to get the finish early, or do you wanna you know kind of beat him up for a few rounds? How how do you expect the fight to go? If I, if I see the finish, I'll beat I'll I'll, I'll take it. But I really want to play with him. I want I want I want I want him to see in front of his friends getting beat up in front of his friends and laughing at him. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to him through the fight. Wow. Well, I, you know, arguably two of your biggest wins came in 2015 over. Um, Obviously, Jack McGann and, and then the knockout to Rick Salvahara. What are you lo- hoping for by the end of 2016? Are you hoping to have more fights or, or are you hoping to just, you know, kind of fight twice a year, three times a year and pick up big wins? 2016? Uh, I don't know. I just feel, I feel the way I'm at now, at the moment, I'm, I'm not being, trying to big myself or anything, but I feel like at the moment, I can't see anybody a lightweight beating me. Because the way I'm training, the work, work that I'm putting in, I know there's not many fighters out there in the UK willing to put the work that I put in. I'm sure you've seen some of it. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just my my goal is just to be to be the best I can be. If I if I do get a title shot for the world title, I will take it. And that title, because I know it's already mine, you know. So yeah. I, anybody beating me, so and yeah, I just I know I'm not like set goals. The set goals just to make myself better, better fight, and that that is it. So yeah. So, you know, a lot of what, what you know, a lot of casual fans don't realize is that a lot of guys that fight outside the UFC, you know, maybe Bama and, and you, you know, all the kind of local promotions, they don't, act, they're not actually full time fighters. They work on on the side. Are you a full time fighter yet, or have you still got a job outside of fighting? Yeah, unfortunately, I, I luckily I've got enough. Like uh, my girlfriend, that she does her own thing, and then obviously uh, Scott asking me and has uh, got a gym, so. Uh, well, so I've worked together, so I've, I've kind of got, I'm kind of lucky to get people around me that help me to, to train full time. Yeah. So yeah, I work part time uh, for like teach, teaching guys as well. I train myself, and that is it. And I just manage all the way through because I want to be yeah. the best I can be. So that's what I mean. I put everything on the line. I make, I manage, I, like I sacrifice everything to make myself a better fighter. So I could see some guy like K Moose that can come from somewhere from. Manchester, wherever I use, yeah, to come and take this what I I work for. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. I work too hard I mean, for this. I've you know I've I've seen some of your Snapchats and I've seen you like driving on the motorway to train and at uh, you know five six a.m. How how often do you train and how long do you train for? <laughs> I do a lot of hours. I think at least like when I go we go Manchester we do we do at least like two and a half hours full on stretches. <laughs> So after that, I come back to Doncaster. If it's, if I'm not teaching that day, I go drive to Sheffield and do my boxing. And but certain certain things that I do, like I just keep it to myself. Don't lie to telling everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Different settings. Is that not you know mentally tough because you've got to travel from one place, do a hard training session, then another place, another hard training session? Does that not you know kind of help you know hinder you mentally? It is, but I've come to realize when, when you want something, you've got to you've got to you've got to put put in the work. You can't just get it. So I go out there and try and get be the best I can be. That's why I travel to go and get the the best there is. So I make myself a better fighter. Yeah. So obviously you and Kane are both undefeated. How much pressure do you think that's going to add on fight night? <laughs> I'm never in pressure. He's in pressure. He knows he's in big pressure. 
That's why he's not been replying to me on Twitter or anything, because I know I've never I've been there before. Jack McGann's fight was I was there to lose. I knew I was there to lose, and I went there because I I knew. But people, I might not show it to people, but I knew I was there to showcase. That was my chance to showcase to everybody that yeah I can win the, these fights. But so on this fight I ain't got pressure at all. I'm just going there and showcasing what I'm actually been working on and smash him to bits, pick him apart. So you know, as you said, you're not playing games. You you kind of you don't want you know you don't like Kane because he's trying to take this away from you. Is this a real dislike or you know will you and Kane be all right after the fight? No, it's, I don't, that's, like I said, I, I don't take anything personal. If he wants to yeah. fight, because I'll be all right with him. You know, it's a, it's a fight, end of the day. It's a sport. He, he trains, I train. We're going to fight, and that's it. I say he gets paid, I say I'll be getting paid. So I don't take anything personal, because it's not a personal thing. You know, it's a show. We're there for the show, so we can't be personal. Well, Mark, that's pretty much all I've got for you. Again, I know you're, you're a very busy man, and a huge thanks for joining me. Um, and I'll, I'll hopefully speak to you after your fight. <laughs> no problem, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.